bro, are you even a Webflow dev if you don't build vertical scroll snapping sliders with Swiper.js? <sighs> Today I'm going to show you how to build this thing. We're also going to explore CSS transitions so that the text animates as well as using GSAT for that little line indicator thing on the left. Don't know what else to call it. Anyways, check it out. Hey there, Web Bay. Okay, here in our Webflow project, we've got our main wrapper. This is not styled at all, but right inside of that, I'm going to drop a div with a class name of Swiper Component. Now, this has display set to grid. It's just one row and two columns. I have the column on the left here set to 5 rem. So that's where our pagination dots are going to go, and I will show you that next. We also have width set to 100% and a height of 100 viewport heights for this one. Inside of Swiper Component, we're going to drop swiper controls wrap. I will get to this later, but for now, I'm just putting it there so it fills some space within the div. And we have our div called swiper. Now, it's very important that we name these with the class name swiper because the swiper library is looking for these names as it runs its JavaScript. Within swiper, we also need swiper wrapper as a child. So you can see we have our class of swiper wrapper. And then I add a combo class of wrapper style just to give it a width of 100%. Within the wrapper, we have one last child, and this is our swiper slide. It's not the last child, but it's the last swiper-oriented child. So let me click on that, and you can see it's called here, swiper slide. And then I have a combo class of is style just to, just to differentiate what our styles are. And then I just don't style these uh, swiper slides or swiper wrapper or swiper if I want to reuse it on another project. So within the slide is where I'll do all of my slide styling. So inside of that, I'll put another div, and this is going to have all my padding. It's going to set the height to 100 viewport heights. I have overflow set to hidden. So all sorts of different things for how I want to style the slide, display set to flex. You know, however you want your content to display, that's what's going to go inside of style slide. Now, all I have on this project is an H1 for my first slide, and the rest are going to be H2s. And I put some fancy little italic text right there. And that's really all we need to know about how the slide is. So I'll duplicate that three times so that now you can see I have slide, slide, slide. And then there's some, there's a combo class of is active applied to this heading that I'll get to in a moment. This is how we're going to animate using CSS transitions. Anyways, let's just focus on getting the slider set up first. Now, inside of swiper controls wrap, this is just a flexbox vertical justified to the bottom with a little bit of padding on the bottom here. I'm going to drop a div called swiper pagination custom. And in our code, we're going to give this class name so that Swiper knows where to drop our little dots. And you can see this has Flexbox as well with a gap and all that good stuff. But inside this div is where we're going to place all of our template components. So first, I have Swiper Bullet Custom, and it's got a combo class of is active. This is what's going to apply for the is active one. You see, if I remove that, then I have this kind of empty little circle here. Let's zoom in there because I got these small, fancy looking circles, and then zoom out. So I can toggle the is active class on the swiper bullet custom to get that style how I want. Now, swiper is going to add the bullets on its own, but just to make it look good in Webflow, I'm going to add three more just to match the number of slides that I have. And then I also want to add this line. So div line is just a line with one pixel width and set to 40% of the height position relative. And then inside that line, I have another one called front or front line or something. Uh, I don't know, I was in the military for quite a while, so I guess front line is popping up in my head. Anyways, that's not the point. But the point is this thing is set to position absolute with the Z index, so it sits on top. And it's 100% of the height of its parent, which is that div line with the width of one pixel. And then it's got a, a brighter color. So that's going to be the thing that scrolls up and down to animate uh, when we change the slide. And then very lastly, we want to show our slide number right at the top here. So this has a class of swiper slide number, some color, a little bit of bottom margin, and that's really it. Now, before we publish, let's check out what scripts we're loading. If I click on the gear icon on the home page here, you can see inside the head tag, first I'm loading the swiper library and I'm getting version 9.0.5. I wanna highlight this because if you're on Swiper's website and you have the use swiper from CDN, they're linking to the version eight files, both in their CSS and their scripts. So you can see the latest version is version nine. I'm using version nine, but be careful if you copy and paste from Swiper's website, you'll get version eight. So I just got it from cdnjs.com, searching for Swiper, and you want the first two here. We're gonna need some JavaScript as well as some CSS. So the first one here, we got the link tag. I'm loading the, C this is the CSS file. If I scroll to the end, you'll see .css. 
And then right after that, I'm loading the JavaScript file, again, version 9.0.5. This is in the head tag, and I'm deferring it along with all the other scripts. The order of these scripts does matter, by the way. So after that one, I'm loading GSAP version 3.11.4. And lastly, a code sandbox file that we will have a look at in just a second. So I'll go ahead and save this and publish. Now in our code, let's go ahead and define the new swiper instance. I'm going to define a variable called swiper and then instantiate a new instance of that class with capital S swiper. And I'm going to pass it our class dot swiper. I also have an empty options object that I'm going to pass some important parameters to. Those are the direction and I want the direction to be vertical. So I'm giving it this string vertical. We want it to loop. So we're going to give it a Boolean value of true for loop. And we want it to interact with our mouse wheel because we need to scroll it, right? So that gets a value of true as well. If I save this and go to my Webflow project, you can see now I have a basic slider. I haven't set up everything else, so let's start working on it. In addition to mouse wheel true, we can enable the keyboard so that we can page through our swiper with the keyboards. And now I'm pressing up and down and we can page through this thing. Next, we'll want to set up our pagination. So I can call the pagination property here and pass it another object, and this gets some parameters as well. So L, this stands for the element. Now we want to drop pagination into our swiper pagination custom class. So make sure you have that little dot here. And then we'll set the bullet class to be swiper bullet custom. Again, these were defined in the Webflow project. And then the active class is called is active and the button element. We're just going to make the pagination buttons be buttons. And lastly, we'll make them clickable. So I'll save that. And if I reload here, I saw our dots flash there, but now they're gone. Let's inspect what's going on in Chrome DevTools. So if I open up Chrome DevTools and I search down where our pagination should be, and I open this, we can see that our dots are kind of off the page. You see it's pointing down at the bottom left there. And if I go in here, we see that these buttons are getting rendered, so that's all good. However, on this wrapper class, the swiper, the swiper JS CSS that ships with the link tag is actually applying some styles for us that we didn't know about. So we have right, a property of left, a property of top, and a transform. If we just get rid of these, now we can see that our dots are starting to appear. So we're going to have to actually override this in our Webflow project. So all, all I'm going to do is I can just copy and paste all this and come back to Webflow. And I'll get a custom embed here, open up a style tag, close the style tag, and paste that. And now we don't want any of these comments. All we got to do is rather than target these CSS variables, we'll set right to auto. We'll set left to auto. We'll set top to auto. And we'll set bottom to auto while we're at it. And we'll set the transform rather than negative 50%. We'll also set that to zero. Just give these all a value of zero. Save and publish. And now our dots are right where we need them to be and we can select them to make some changes happen on our slider. Back here in the code, let's start looking at how we can further customize our swiper instance as well as animate the text and that line on the left. So the things I'm gonna to wanna to animate, we're gonna go ahead and select them. First, we have the slide number. That's not gonna be animated, but I'm just gonna change it out when the slide changes. And then we wanna get each of our slides and we wanna get the headings. Let's also store our speed in a variable for the swiper transition as well as our animation so that we can make everything time more in sync. So I'm just gonna pass that speed variable to the property speed within our swiper instance. And now let's look at how we can change that number on the left when the swiper active index changes. So swiper comes with all of these events. And if I come to the API documentation here and click on events, there's a list of all the different events that we can target and run code when these events fire. So the very first one we'll look for is active index change. And something key to note is you want to be careful which index you use. Swiper has an index called real index as well as one called active index. In this case, we're going to use real index, but let's have a look at what each one does just so that we know what we're doing. So I've got those, I've saved and I refresh and I'm going to open up inspector now and we should expect to see some numbers in the console. So I scroll, we can see active index one, real index one. Those are matching. That's good. Come down here two two. 3, 3, and then, oh, we scroll back and we've looped, but now active index went 2, 3, and real index went 3, 0. And we want real index, so let's stick with that one. All we have to do to change out the slide number is take out the text content from slide number that we stored earlier in our selectors, 
and we'll set that equal to swiper.realindex, or in this case, we could just say real index plus one. And if we save that and refresh, and now when we scroll, we can see our number over here changing. And then when we loop back, it comes back to one. And if we go up, it reduces. So that's great. If we want to animate this heading, we'll need to toggle a class on and off when we change the slide. Back in our Webflow project, looking at the heading, you can see that I've applied this combo class of is active. Now, if I remove it, I have the opacity dialed down to 10% and the transform set to translate in the X direction, negative 100 pixels. I also have a transition property applied to the transform of 1000 milliseconds and the opacity of 1000 milliseconds. This makes it such that when we apply our combo class back on is active, the heading is going to animate into place. So we're going to write some code that toggles this is active combo class on each heading that we have in our different slides. Now we stored all the headings in a node list already, so we can run a for each loop on that. And that's going to give us access to each individual heading on each individual heading. We'll access the class list and then we'll call this method called remove is active, the name of that class. So this is going to remove is active from all the headings. And then we want to apply to the heading that has the real index. So headings of swiper.realindex. And then we'll access the class list and call the method dot add and add our is active class. So let's save and return to our project. And we can see as we slide now, we're getting that animation that we want. Just a subtle little opacity and translation. Swiper.js has an event that fires when the swiper goes to the next slide. That's going to be this event called slide next transition start. So that's going to get a function that we're defining right here. And let's just go ahead and console log swipe down to tell ourselves like, hey, we know we're swiping down here. And then we're going to call a GSAP timeline. I'm setting the default speed here to be our speed variable from above divided by 2000. This is because GSAP takes time in seconds, whereas everything else takes it in milliseconds. And then I want to divide it by two because I'm running essentially two little transitions here. So I have a dot two statement where I get the access the front class and then we translate Y down 100%. And then we immediately set it to negative 100%. So it's like wrapping basically, but we're not going to see it because dot set here is immediate. And then we're going to call dot two on it again and translate it back to its original position, 0%. We can also do the same in the previous direction. So the event that fires in that direction is called slide prev transition start, gets another function. And this is going to be pretty much the exact same of what we did above, but we're going to console log swipe up and we're going to go first to negative 100, then to positive 100 then to zero. So let's save and refresh and see what we get. So scroll down, we get console log, scroll down, and we can see the line animating here on the left. It looks really nice. And if we scroll up, it animates in the other direction. Pretty cool. All right, thank you so much for watching. That covers some intro stuff with Swiper.js. Don't forget to brush your teeth tonight. Yeah.